here when he called me. I appreciate Brother Crotch. He's always been a blessing to me, him and his family. I appreciate Brother Hillman. Got to meet him a little bit. And I appreciate the work that's going on here. Uh, first time I ever got to see your new building. That's wonderful. Last time I was here was in a Blue Ridge Camp meeting rally about, uh, I don't know, 11 years ago, I guess. And God actually did something that night. Uh, and you've probably heard me tell the story on the radio. I don't call names when, the, when I tell the story. But uh, Brother Dean Eaton was here with the camp meeting. I believe he's in charge of it then. And Brother Dean gave me the love offering. And I just had started into missions. And the Holy Spirit said, give it back to the camp meeting. Now, a missionary has really got to be right with God if you want to give money away. You know that, right? <laughs> And uh, gas, it just went to $4 a gallon. And uh, I said, man, I don't know about this. And Holy Spirit said, you give that money back. Don't you take that money. I looked at Brother Dean. I said, I can't take the money. I said, I can't take that. So that's on Saturday night and on Thursday morning, my wife was raised Southern Baptist. Now, she knew all the things of the Bible. She's smarter than the Bible. I believe than I am. But she was raised Southern Baptist Church in, in Mississippi, in Alabama. And I thought that Southern Baptist, she's an independent Baptist. Now I thought she was going to shout. She came in the house. She'd been from the mailbox. She said, Ricky, you ain't going to believe what's happened. And she just kept saying, you ain't going to believe what's happened. And I said, I'm not going to know what's happened if you don't tell me. I... <laughs> and she said, we got a check in the mail for 20 times what you gave back to that camp meeting. And we couldn't keep all that money. We had to give it away. And uh, God blesses. And through these years, God has took care of us. Our ministry began... I began in radio in 1985, preaching at the station, one of the stations that we now own there, WYZD in Dobson. At that time, it didn't hardly get out of Dobson, but uh, I, I preached on, on there for a few years as a kid. I started when I was 19 into radio. In uh, 1999, we formed Gospel Broadcasting Incorporated. Uh, because of my radio broadcast, we was getting so many donations in and things, we wanted to be legal with the government, do it right. So we formed a 501c3 a corporation with its own board of directors and all that kind of stuff. And in 2002, uh, we purchased the WYZD radio station in Dobson, North Carolina. And um, we, did, we got that paid off in 2013, over 100, about $123,000. And uh, we started to go to work there. And I pastored some churches during this time too, but I pastored the churches and, and did the radio too. Matter of fact, I planted a church uh, during that time, and it's still going. They've got a good pastor, and they've got a brand new building, and they've just paid their property and building off, and I thank God for that uh, there in the mountains of North Carolina. But uh, in, uh, we began working in, uh, in 2010. God laid on our heart to buy the radio station in Sparta, North Carolina, and we bought that station. In 2013, as I said, we paid WYZD off, and then in uh, 2014... Uh, we, uh, the phone company, we approached them about broadcasting uh, our Sparta station on the TV. The phone companies have gotten into the IPTV business down in Surrey County and Allegheny County, Wilkes County, and all those counties down in North Carolina in the, in the western part there. Long story short, we now have four television outlets that broadcast with us. Uh, we have two AM stations, two FM stations. We put the translators up. And I was just checking it out here in the parking lot. You can get the 95.3 clear right here. And I don't understand that. I don't understand that. <laughs> uh, it's really not supposed to do that, I don't guess, but we're doing it. And uh, I mean, we're not breaking the law or anything. I just didn't know it did that. And for some reason, you put this stuff up and it goes the way it wants to. I don't know why everything always shoots north. Our, our WYZD station shoots north. And so in 2013, we got a big power increase down there in Dobson to 4,000 watts. And that's helped us out. What hurts us with that station is, uh, of course, the AM side's just uh, sun up to sun down because we're on New York City's frequency and we, we can't get away from that. But what we've done in the past few months to really help people across America is uh, we have uh, produced the GBI, and that's our ministry, Gospel Broadcasting Incorporated. We have produced the GBI radio app. And many people have downloaded the app. It's in the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store, or you can go to gbiradio.org and you can follow the links and you can download that uh, app. And I hope you'll do that. If you haven't downloaded, I hope you'll do that. And then that way you can listen to either station. Uh, the one in Sparta has really become the Gospel Broadcasting Radio Network because it's got so many outlets with it, the TVs and all that. 
And they called me the other day and said, Preacher, we're going to put you on the Sky Best TV app. Do you mind us putting on you on our app? I said, I don't, I don't mind at all. If you want to give me something free and broadcast the gospel, that's wonderful. And so the Lord's blessed it. Then the Lord's added another thing to us. He is really touched, and I, I have nothing to do with this. But our gospel pulpit radio broadcast, God has really begun to use them in an unusual way. We cover the southeastern part of the United States. We're on radio in Tennessee, South Carolina, Georgia. We go into North Florida a little bit. Uh, we cover parts of North Carolina, Virginia, and uh, Kentucky, Illinois, Indiana. And uh, I've had letters as far away as from California. We're not even on the radio in California. People listen on the Internet. And uh, just the other day I was approached with a, a, a unique opportunity uh, Stu Epperson that owns the SRN Radio Network, uh, they, he owns some stations down in Florida. And they have proposed to me to go on three uh, big power FM stations in the state of Florida that will cover North Florida all the way down to Daytona Beach. It will cover Metro Jacksonville and uh, St. Augustine and up to Folkestone, Georgia. And I told the man, I said, I can't go on with it. He didn't give up. He kept calling me back. He said, my manager wants you on. I said, I don't have the money. I can't take anything on that I can't pay for. You say, preacher, don't you believe in faith? I do. But as my late friend, Dr. Bobby Robertson, used to say, there's a difference between faith and foolishness. So I want to be careful. Amen. But the Lord has done something. I'm going to be making a major announcement about this in the coming days and, and my young man that works for me, he looked at me the other day and said, Preacher, are we taking those... St-? And I like that we business, you know, because that shows he's part of the ministry. He said, are, are we taking those stations in Florida? And I said, uh-huh. God's already told me the money's coming. And, I fa-. and so what we're doing is we are going to be raising money for that uh, in our prayer letters and all that. What we're looking for is about 10 churches that will take that on at $50 a month or five churches that will take us on $100 a month for that. Uh, and and it just, the money will go to us and then we'll pay the stations. But God has blessed that down through the years and it is not for my glory. I get embarrassed. I don't like people listening to me on the radio. I mean, I, li- I want them to listen, but when I find out who's listening, Brother Crotts, it embarrasses me. Uh, Brother Bobby Robertson, before he died, came to me, Rick, I'm listening to you on the radio. I said, Bobby, if you're going to listen, I'm going to quit. I found out one day that, and Jack Treber don't know me from anybody, from a uh, polecat, I don't guess, but I found out Jack Trever was listening to me on the radio. I said, if he's going to listen, I'm going to quit. And you know, you don't know where radio's going. It just goes all over everywhere. And so God's used it all over the country to help it. I had a man call me uh, last week from Minnesota. And you know, Brother Crotson, you know this. You used to preach on our station there in Dobson when it hardly didn't get out of Dobson. Uh, two old ladies could get it, but the hearing aid batteries were weak in there, and they didn't hear it well. And... Uh, and so, but now, uh, but the man called me from Minnesota and all this technology, he drive, you know, what a dumb place to be from, Wyoming, Minnesota. That's just dumb, you know. And uh, Wyoming, Minnesota. And, uh, but anyway, he calls me up and he said to me, uh, Preacher, I'm driving around in my car and this uh, Apple Play, whatever, the Google Play, Apple Play, whatever it is, Car Play, I don't know all that stuff, but you all know it all. I guarantee you Brother Hillman knows how to work all that stuff. Amen. That's, that's beyond me, but that's why I've got a young man working for me that knows the business. And uh, so uh, he's driving around in his car listening to our radio stations in Minnesota. And God has opened it. Let me say this to you. The, the door for media is open. I can't really get into a lot of details, but there are some potential opportunities that's on the horizon for gospel broadcasting. And I can't really, I, I wish I, my wife gets on me. She said, I talk too much about them, and I probably do. But just pray for us. You know, we're doing well. God's blessed our ministry, and we're doing good. Uh, but pray for us that we will be financially and spiritually uh, ready when these doors open, that God will give me wisdom to walk through these doors. Because I, my life has really changed in the last one year. Uh, God had to bring me to my knees, and I won't get into all that story, but I, He made me very sick for about one year. I'm well now. I'm probably 99, 98% better now, and I'm doing good. But uh, God's really changed my life. And the only thing I want to do now is help people. And if I can't help you, then I don't want to preach. And if I can't preach filled with the Holy Ghost, I don't want to preach. And I mean that. Too many preachers are preaching just to have a place to preach. I don't want it. 
I don't want it. If God's not in it, as Moses said in the book of Exodus, if God don't go with me, I don't want to go. Amen? Well, we're here in missions. By the way, radio is a mission. Now, we aid the local churches. Let me just back up and say this. I am sent out and work out of a local church. Okay, I'm the only man with uh, uh, two mission boards. Gospel Broadcasting for years has been our mission board, our board of directors. But I'm also now with TBMI, our Tabernacle Baptist Missions International, Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, Brother Melvin Aiken is our missions director there of Tabernacle Baptist Church. And then uh, Christy and myself, we, the Lord has worked it out where we work out of Tabernacle Baptist. And Brother Logan, Joel Logan is our pastor. And uh, we keep close in, close in touch with our pastor and with the church. And uh, we thank God for our home church. It's been a blessing to work out of there. And uh, God's used us. And so I, I praise the Lord and God's used that uh, relationship. They have two radio stations, AM and FM, there in Greenville, Pickens. And uh, God's used it, but now, you know, when we, when we started down there working out of the church, uh, they made it plain and we made it plain. You know, we agreed. That we don't tell them how to do anything. They don't tell us how to do anything. Now, if Pastor Logan needed to tell me something, I'd listen to him. Uh, I, I saw him last week, and, and uh, if, he, if he needs to tell me anything, I'd listen to him. But we have really, God's blessed our ministry to open the door for that. So I'd ask you to do uh, one or two or three things for us. Number one, download the app if you hadn't downloaded it. Follow us on Facebook at the Gospel Broadcasting page because we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in the next few weeks on Facebook. Our share is the 28th through the 2nd, and that's Monday through Friday. And we'll be doing, we're going to have live preaching every day at 1 o'clock, and uh, we're going to be uh, uh, doing some. And by the way, raising money is not a, uh, it shouldn't be a thing of dread. It ought to be a time of happiness because that's when you get to invest in the work of the Lord, you know? Amen. Missions does not bother me. I love it. You get to invest in the work of the Lord, friend. That's what it is. You know, you, did you know Bartrell Baptist Church has an account in heaven? It may have an account at the bank somewhere, and I'm, I'm sure it does, but it's got an account in heaven. And everybody gets saved. God said, all right, put that down for Bartrell Baptist Church and Brother Crotts and the people. Of the, you say, I don't believe that. It's in the Bible. Book of Philippians is in the Bible. And uh, so God, uh, God helps us. God uh, rewards missions. I, I can't begin to tell you since I started really, and, and I didn't know about faith promise for many years, Brother Cross. I didn't know about it. Uh, we didn't have that growing up in our church. We just didn't know. I guess our preachers didn't know about it. But I've got to tell you, God has blessed me. And I thank God for getting to be a part of missions. And our church probably supports. And I don't say this, Brother, because I don't think you ought to go around and brag about how many missionaries you support. It's just by the grace of God you can do it. But I think Tabernacle supports like 300 missionaries. And we have missionaries going out of our church. And um, the last Sunday, our church just blessed me. We have a man planting churches in Africa, and our church had a large part in that last Sunday, and I appreciate it. Well, it's an honor to be here, and he asked me Thursday about coming and preaching, and I want to preach to help you tonight in the missions meeting. So if you'll open your Bibles with me now to the book of Matthew. By the way, I appreciate my wife, Christy. She always goes everywhere I go, because if she didn't go, I couldn't go. Amen. I wouldn't go far, I'll tell you that. Amen. You say, why don't you drive? I quit when the tree ran out in front of me. Amen. But uh, actually, I drove, drove a little bit since that, but then I went down a bank, so we won't talk about that. But uh, anyway, Matthew chapter number 28 tonight. Matthew chapter 28, and very, very familiar scripture tonight. And I'm honored, Brother Cox, you'd let me stand in this pulpit and preach and, and, and try to help your people and... Uh, I want to do something for the glory of God, not Ricky Cotham. I just want to help you. And I hope tonight when we get through, you're more stirred about missions than you were when you came. And uh, listen, I want to say this. All missionaries are not golf-playing, penny-pinching, chicken-eating preachers that are too lazy to work. I want you to understand that. I'm a missionary, and I work very, very hard, okay? I've got nothing wrong with a man taking some downtime. I have hobbies. You say, well, what can a blind man do? Well, I grew a 30-pound watermelon this year. And then I turned around and grew a 32-pound. Well, that was Christie's watermelon, 32-pound. Hers beat mine. But uh, I love planting a garden, you know, and I found out a blind man can grow things. I told the pastor the other night, I said, my pastor hates okra. Uh, he's not right with God. When he gets to heaven, God will talk to him about it. But he hates okra. And uh, I, I just don't think he's a southerner. He says he's from Alabama, hates okra. I don't, but I told him, I said, the only thing left in my garden are okra stalks, and they're taller than me. He, he looked at me and said, that's because the bugs won't even eat that stuff. 
<laughs> but uh, anyway, we have a good relationship. We go back and forth. But anyway, tonight, and I want to get serious. I want you to look in the Word of God tonight. Now, this is my scripture, King James Bible, okay? Because of my eyesight, I blow it up to 36 font, and I want you to understand. I don't know what y'all do here. Some churches stand when you read, some don't. Uh, what do y'all do, Brother Cox? Do y'all usually stand or do you not? Okay. That, that is fine with me. I prefer really that they don't. I prefer you don't really a lot of times because I feel like that when you stand a lot of times, and, and I know what people say, you're reverencing the Bible. When you really, actually, if you're sitting there and you're getting your Bible, you're going to follow along with me better than you are if you get up and down and up and down. It's going to disturb you. So I've learned that fact and I really appreciate it. Matthew chapter number 28. Matthew closes his gospel with what we call the Great Commission. And I want to read that to you, beginning in chapter number 28, verse number 19 tonight. And if you'll keep your Bibles open with me, I want to give you some things from these two verses that I hope will help you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Let us pray. Father, help us tonight as we look at what we call the Great Commission in the Bible. Lord, help us to look tonight and get something from your word about missions. Thank you, Father, that you uh, sent your Son as the first missionary into the world. Lord, to redeem the world. And Lord, uh, and those of us that are saved will be gathered to you, Lord, in heaven one day. Help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, when we look at this, I'm going to get into the message in just a minute, but I want to say tonight we have a command here from the Lord Jesus Christ to go into all the world and teach all nations. What are we going to teach them? The gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll get into that in a few minutes. But I want to give you, just before we start tonight, I thought I would just start out like this and give you a few mission quotes. You know, you hear a little quote sometimes that help you about missions. Well, did you know there are three kinds of missionaries? There are three kinds of missionaries. Number one, there's the go missionary. That's the man that will take his family and go where God's called him to go. Right. Secondly, there's the co-missionary. That's Bear Trail Baptist Church. That's why you're having a missions conference tonight. Right. And you're, I believe basically you're to do two things. I believe you're to support your missionaries financially. And I know you do. I believe you're to do that faithfully. And then I believe you're to pray for them. Right. Paul said, brethren, pray for us. And not just Brother Crotz and Brother Hillman, but I think every member of Barrettville Baptist Church, you ought to find out who your missionaries are and pray for them. And if, you can't, if you're like me at Tabernacle, we support 300. If you can't pray for all of them, just say, Lord, bless all the missionaries that we have. Amen. And maybe you could take some special time and pray for your missionaries. And I've got to tell you, now I have people that don't support us, but they'll tell me, Brother Crotz, we're praying for you every day. I'd rather have your prayers than have the money. Because here's the thing about it. God, through those prayers, will bring in the money. God will meet the needs and fight the devil back and pave the way for you. Amen? Amen. Uh, and so, and then, then another, another thing I think about when I think about missions is, is a fellow said this, every creature needs a preacher. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever, don't ever get to the idea of, well, I wouldn't send anybody to Iran or North Korea. They need a preaching too. Don't forget that, amen. You know, after World War II, there's a lot of people hesitant about uh, trying to win the Japanese to the Lord. They're not our enemies, friend. Did you know the heathen tonight is not our enemies? They need to be saved. Do you realize the Apostle Paul was an enemy to the church until he got saved? You know that? And then the third quote I want to give you is this one. A, somebody has said this, and I thought it was pretty good. A missionary is a, one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Well, that's right. Amen. Amen. I'm just an old beggar, and I'm just trying to tell people where to find bread. You find the same thing. Remember those four lepers? And that number four in the Bible is the number of the earth, north, east, south, and west. They're sitting outside that city, and they said something bad's going to happen to us if we don't go back in there and tell them what we've found. Boy, those lepers unclean, but glory to God, God sent them. I'm glad God sends people to the four corners of the earth, don't you? Amen. And then I want to give you this one. My late friend, Dr. Stennett Ballou, and we were close friends and I've heard him say this so many of times, and you ought to write this one down. God will never give to you what God will give through you. You will be amazed if you give to missions what God will do through you, through the local church, uh, and, and you won't get to keep that money, but you'll be amazed what God will send to you, and then you just give it right on to, and, and meet the need. Amen? God will. In other words, it's like a water hose. Water hose is plugged to the source, and then the water goes through the water hose, 
and then the hand has to take the water hose and water the garden, right? Well, the hand is God, and uh, He guides it to whatever spot He wants to. The water hose is you and I carrying the water, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit of God through the power of God, and we're hooked up to the source, which is heaven, and we're just to water whatever garden God says, and God will supply the need through us. How does God meet the needs? Through man. Amen. That's how He meets the needs. Then I'm going to give you this one. And I, and Dr. Blue also said this, and I believe this sums up missions. We're to go across the sea. No doubt we're to send missionaries across the sea. There are other countries tonight still waiting to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're to go across the state. And I believe that. We ought to do our part to cover as much of North Carolina and Virginia as we can with the glory of God. But let me say another area. Don't forget about going down your street. Witness to people. You know, I, I disobeyed the Lord Friday. And, and really, the Lord got on me about that. I hadn't really, uh, really thought about what I was praying, but I've been praying the Lord give me some people to witness to. And you know, everybody hates telemarketers, right? I mean, I don't, I, it's just a, uh, they're just such, it's such an aggravation when your phone rings and uh, you pick it up and you say hello and the voice on the other end, you may not even understand them. And uh, the Lord told me last week, said, you need to witness to that lady. And I, I didn't witness and I should have. And, and I want to start, you know, being obedient to the Lord just, just in little things. You say, well, preacher, does that work? Let me tell you, let me tell you a little story. The other day I had to return a uh, piece of equipment. I won't name the company, and I'm in, I'm in the pulpit, but I won't name the company. But I had to return a, a piece of equipment that went bad. And so this little lady was helping me. They contract these jobs sometimes out to India and other places. And this little lady was helping me from India. And I began to tell her what we do. You know, we're, we're gospel broadcasting. We broadcast by radio. And I told her, Brother Crotz, about the GBI radio app. Now, this was in uh, early June, I believe it was, before we released it. And you could go on the website and you could, uh, you could pre-order it. You, you know what she did? From India, she pre-ordered that app and launched it. The day it launched, it went into her phone. And glory to God, we're getting the gospel into India. She's listening uh, from India to gospel broadcasting. And so we got, you've got to be careful nowadays. Amen. But now let me get into the message here in Matthew 28, 19. I want you to look at it. Number one, I want you to see tonight, if you'll look at your scripture tonight, uh, I want you to see the man in missions. What do you mean, preacher? Well, look at the first two words. Go ye. Now, ye in the English language is a congregational word. When you see the word thou, it is an individual word. But when you see the word ye, it's a congregational word. And God is telling a people to go. Amen. God has to have a man in missions. Now, wait a minute. God don't call every man to go to the same place. For if he did, everybody would be doing the same work. But God's got one man in Africa. God's got one man in Canada. God's got one man in South America. God's, and so I don't know where your work is. I, I would say this. There is a difference between a burden and a calling. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm called to be in radio. I won't tell you I won't ever do anything else plus radio. But my main calling is radio. God has called me to do that. And I know that. Not, not very many people are doing that in these days. And that's okay. Uh, but I know where God put me. And you see, God will put you, God puts missionaries on the mission field. God has to have a man. Thank God for the man that is willing to go somewhere and do something. Amen. I mean, listen, you know, uh, we've all kind of got it made here in America. But what if God touched your heart and said, look, I want you to go to Africa. Or I want you to go to South America. I want you to go to Asia. Uh, how would that be? I mean, would you be ready to go? God knows my heart tonight at 54 year old right now. And God knows my heart. If God called me to the mission field right now, I, I, I believe my wife would go with me. We'd load up and we'd go wherever God called us to. Why? Because if you're out of the will of God, you can't do anything anyway. And if you're in the will of God, uh, you can do it. But God has to have a man. He said, go ye. Who's God talking to? His disciples. And now who are we? We are disciples. We're not apostles. Now the apostles were apostles and disciples. But we are just disciples. We don't have the apostolic powers, nor do we need them. That was a sign to the Jews, so we don't need that. But what we need tonight is just go where God wants us to. God said, go ye. That's the man in missions. Now, look at your Bible there, the same scripture, Matthew 28, number 2. I want you to notice this, and uh, you may wonder how I'm getting this out of this scripture, but I'm going to show it to you. Verse number 19 says, go ye therefore. In other words, you're to go. I, I, want, you, I want to talk for a minute about the money in missions. Now, you can't just go if you're not taking... In other words, uh, you can't send a man to the jungles of Africa uh, and expect him to live without churches supporting him here in the United States. Why? Because he don't know their culture. He's probably not going to be able to get a job. They don't make very much money themselves. And, and I believe God ordained that. You say, well, preacher, where's that at in the Bible? 
Well, in Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 16, Paul said this, For even in Thessalonica you sent once and again unto my necessity. Paul said, you, you, you sent me missions money to help with my need. That's what God's ordained, that the local church support missions. Now, I believe, according to the Word of God, that missions ought to come strictly out of the local church, out of the fund, out, out of where people give it into the local church. The local church ought to distribute it to the missionaries, and I believe that's the way God's laid that out. Now, a lot of people, you know, they don't like when you talk about the money in missions. I want to say this. As missionaries, on the other side of that, if I'm going to be a go missionary and a church supports me, I need to be careful how I spend God's money. Did you know at Gospel Broadcasting, I need to be careful about every decision we make. We have a board of directors that, that, make, that helps us make decisions. And we need to be careful about every decision we make. Because the Bible said, go ye therefore, it costs money to go. And so the church helped. Now let me show you another thing about this tonight. Number three, I want to show you this one. I want to show you the message in missions. Look at verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now there's a difference in these two words, uh, uh, words teach here. The word teach in verse number 20 does not mean, it's not the same Greek word as the word teach in verse number 19. In verse number 19, basically the word teach here, it means to get them converted. And, and so our message to the lost and dying world must be the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we got to preach to the lost and dying world. To people that are lost, that's what you do. you got to preach the gospel to them. There was nothing wrong tonight with what Brother uh, Hillman did singing that uh, song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. I like that. Because in Luke 2, 8, that's what the angels were doing. They were declaring the gospel. But in, a, in this day of grace, God does not use the angels to declare the gospel. God uses you and me. And we need to make the message plain. When we, when we send a man to the mission field, we need to make sure that that man is ready and prepared and that he will preach the gospel message to the people and win these people to the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a missionary. I've never met him. I don't know if Brother Kotz has or not, but there's a missionary connected with my home church at Tabernacle. Now, I know his son, uh, but I've never met Brother Jimmy Rose. Brother, Brother Terrell Rose, I know Brother Terrell, uh, but Brother Jimmy Rose left in 1962 to go to the country of Brazil from Greenville, South Carolina. God used that one man to totally change the nation of Brazil. There are churches everywhere down there that he has planted or had association with. And listen, you don't know what God's going to do with just one person that will carry the gospel message. Did you know somebody had to come through here years ago, probably hundreds of years ago, and carry the gospel message to Virginia? Do you realize when America was first founded, the gospel wasn't down here. It was up there in the New England states, in what we'd call blue states. Now, I don't like that, blue states and red states. Well, the United States, amen? But do you realize the first Baptist church in America was started in Providence, Rhode Island? And a man named Roger Williams. Matter of fact, they gave him the whole state. And, and, that's, and that's how their uh, capital city is named Providence uh, because the providence of God. But you see, we have a great history, uh, uh, God, uh, this nation being founded on God. If you, if you uh, were to go back and read the rules of Harvard and Yale colleges in the 1640s, these schools were started to train preacher men in the gospel. Now, they're far from that today, but that's where they were then, 1640s, Amen. And uh, so, uh, you, you see what I'm saying tonight is we've got to have people that will go with the gospel. Our message tonight is the cross. Our message is Jesus died, was buried, and rose again for men's sins. That is our message tonight. By the way, that's still our message in the local church. Now, I realize we've got to uh, preach and teach to save people other things and get them grounded, but our message to the sinner, ladies and gentlemen, is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, unfortunately, in our part of the country, sometimes you'll hear other messages, you know. Uh, some men try to clean them up before they get saved. Well, I tell you what, I never did try to clean a fish before I, catch, before I caught it. Right. Amen. That'd be kind of interesting. Amen. And I did fish some. Some of y'all say, a blind man fish? Now, I'm going to clarify what I'm going to say here. You'll think I'm worldly, and I'm not. They had a carp pond up near my house, and no, I didn't bet on them and put my money in the pot and all that stuff. I don't believe in gambling. I'd go to the carp pond in the daytime when the sinners wasn't there. And uh, <laughs> I took a Baptist deacon with me. i never forget it. Poor fellow's in heaven now. He's probably still mad at me. And uh, I, I, I caught a fish one day. i never forget it. 
And, that, and, and I'd never caught a fish that big in my life. And the deacon said, hold that pole for 30 minutes. He screamed, hold that pole. Me and that carp, we walked up and down that pond before he decided to give up. And he finally gave up and caught a 22 and a half pound fish. And the deacon said to me, well, preacher, he said, why don't you pray the Lord help me catch a fish? And I did. I said, Lord, help Bob to catch a fish. He caught one about that long. Bless his heart. My prayers didn't do too good that day. But, but, but what I'm saying is, I didn't try to clean that fish before I caught it. Uh, you, you listen, I, I'm going to tell you this now. You get a man of the gospel, and he genuinely gets saved, I don't think you have to worry too much about cleaning him up. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, this crowd, now I don't mean this ugly, but this crowd's living the same old way they were when, before they got saved. Uh, you know, I don't know that they needed to go back and check that out because when I got saved, I got changed, brother. Amen. And I got the Holy Spirit and I got a conscience down here in my heart. And even at 11 year old, I knew what was right and what was wrong. I knew that. I, I could do something mean to my brother. Hit him in the back with a rock or something. I knew that wasn't right. Amen. I pray God and forgive me. Amen. And of course, mean as he is, I think God understood. But to, no, I no, I take that back. I got a good brother. Amen. But uh, I was preaching one night in a service somewhere, and I said my mama raised uh, raised one dummy, and I said uh, uh, I said uh, uh, it wasn't me, and I didn't know this this carrying the thing on Facebook, and my brother was watching. I didn't know he was watching. I was preaching a meeting, and he texted him, and he said the dummy is watching, and uh, so I, I be careful what I'm doing here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, but the message is the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. And I just, I just say this. I think I can say this here. I, I'd say this anywhere I go. I, our message is not going to change. Right. You, you, you can't come up with new ways to win people to God. Oh, preacher, if you'll just follow this program. I'll tell you one thing. Roger Baker told me one day, we was talking about it. He said, Ricky, there's nothing will ever be knocking on doors and witnessing to people. I said, you're right. Let me tell you something. There's nothing that will ever beat God's program for getting them saved. Amen? You get filled up with God. You get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you go out and you witness to the man at the grocery store. Witness to the person when you pay your power bill. Witness to the person when you, uh, my friend, when you're out in the grocery store. Witness to the person wherever you are. God will give you opportunities throughout the day. We have beside of us a drug assessment office there in our Dobson office. In Sparta, we don't have anything because the building's right out in the middle of a cow pasture or right near it. But, it, but, it, but we do have old Bessie out there. Amen? But that's all we have. Uh, but in Dobson, we were, and Larry Key, preacher brother Larry Key, who's a missionary with Rock of Ages, uh, brother Larry used to run my office for two or three years there. And i never forget it. Larry would pray of the mornings. He'd say, oh God, send me somebody to witness to today. And it would never fail. Somebody would come into our door and they said, I'm here for my assessment. And i never forget it. Brother Larry sitting behind that desk, he'd say to them, well, sir, I can't give you an assessment about drugs, but I can tell you how to go to heaven. And boy, he would start on that fella, and one day out there, he had two of them hemmed up against the wall out there, and he was just, uh, you know, preaching to them, letting them have it. And, and the thing is, it, it, you can find them everywhere, amen? And our message, ought to, and I fail, and you fail, but our message ought to be the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. He said, go ye therefore, amen, and teach all nations. My job is to convert people to the Lord Jesus Christ, or, or, or get them on the road to the Holy Spirit does the conversion, but my job is to get them on the road, amen. I believe this, I, I, I believe there needs to be preaching in some form or fashion, amen. I mean, you know, today we're a little bit little on preaching in a lot of places, and I'll just say this, entertainment will never get anybody saved. Now you can do what you want to do, but I believe in the preached word of God, and it's not necessarily sometimes yelling and screaming, but it, Brother Stanley Blue taught me one thing, he said, Ricky, he said, let the word do your preaching. I can't preach, but this Bible sure does a good job. Amen? And I believe that God... You know, you know how the Apostle Paul got saved by the gospel? The Bible said uh, in the book of Acts, uh, there when he was holding the coat uh, of Stephen, I, I believe Paul heard Stephen speak. Because on the Damascus road, uh, Paul, Jesus said to him, Paul, he said, It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. More than one. That word literally means a cattle prod, like you'd prod cattle along. You know what? God was sticking him every way he turned. He was a lost sinner. He despised 
Jesus Christ. He, was, he thought the Jewish law was the way to go, and yet he would go into men and women's houses. And I don't know, Amazing Grace hadn't been wrote then, but you know they were singing some kind of hymns and songs and spiritual songs. Maybe they had that book you all singing out of tonight. Maybe that's what they're singing out of. I don't know. And you say, well, they didn't do that. Well, you don't know they didn't. Amen. But anyway, they're singing out of something, and, and, and they're, they're preaching, and, and all, you know, what's happening there? Paul's getting under conviction, man. Right. Paul just didn't suddenly get under conviction on the road to Damascus. God had been dealing with him for a long time. And those pricks kept pricking him. You know what it was? He got the gospel message. Now, you, you say this. Well, preacher, people in our part of the country are gospel hardened. Well, I'm going to disagree with you on that just a little bit. <clears throat> They're heart hardened, but the gospel can soften the heart. And, and let me say this to you. I don't know how many times God's going to deal with a man before he saves him, and you don't either. But I'll tell you this. God wants us to give the gospel. You remember Ezekiel? Now, how would you, how would you if, if you're a missionary here tonight, how would you like to be this way? God told Ezekiel, said, you go to him and say, I'm going to tell you before you go, they're not going to hear you. Now, that'd be kind of bad, wouldn't it? Amen. Now, you go there and preach that crowd, but they're not going to hear you, you know. But let me tell you something tonight. Our job, and I've learned this, my job is to preach. And I, I'll go a step farther. My job is not to have results. Now, a lot of preachers don't mean any harm when they do this. And believe me, I'm not being critical, so please don't misunderstand me. But I'll have preachers every once in a while call me and they'll say, Preacher, I think I'm going to drop my radio program. And I say, well, why would you do that? And they'll say, well, I'm not getting any response. Ladies and gentlemen, if I was on the radio, now listen to me, if I was on the radio to get response, there are stations that I would pull and save the money. But I know that people are listening to me that will never write me. And I know there's probably people that have bowed their head and received Jesus Christ in their heart. And when I get to heaven, they'll say, you don't know me. But I was riding down I-75 one day and I heard you over WDEH in Sweetwater, Tennessee. Or I was riding up I-95 and I heard you in Valdosta, Georgia. Or I was riding up 85 and I heard you over WTBI in Greenville. And I bowed my head and I got saved by the grace of God and that makes it all worthwhile. My message is the gospel, amen. Glory to God. Who said you couldn't get excited at Bear Trail Baptist Church? Amen. Amen. Your message is the gospel. Well, let me, let me give you another one here. Number, you say, how many you got? Well, I don't want to discourage you. Let's keep going. Number, <laughs> number four, amen, the membership. Look at verse 19. Now, when I wrote this down, my wife, because of my sickness and these migraine headaches that I've had that are just about gone away now, but my wife helps me a little bit right now, and I'm, I'm getting ready to retire her from this job, but... She sort of helped me put my outline together. I, I put it all together. She just types it. I want you all to understand that, okay? She, she always tells me, she says, she says, if you'll just preach what I've wrote down, you'll be all right. But uh, she's been a good help to me. I love my wife, Christy. But number four, when I wrote this down, Christy said, well, how do you get this out of that? Now, she wasn't being mean. She's curious. Christy is a very curious person. And I don't have time to get into that, but she's very curious. And uh, sometimes if you give her an object to play with, she could hurt you very easily because she's curious how things work. Amen? I mean, what girl in the world at five year old or mom and daddy gave her a telephone, most kids would pick it up and say, hello, uh, you know, and play with it. She didn't do that. She took it apart to look what was on the inside. Amen? Ruined a perfectly good phone. But anyway, here's it. If I was her daddy, I'd make her pay for it. Amen? And... Uh, of course, if I'd been her daddy, I'd run away from home a long time ago. But uh, number, no, I'm here. Number four, amen? I need a ride home, by the way. Number four. <laughs> yeah, number, I, I, I got to do something, you know, keep you awake just a little bit. It's all right. Number four, I want to show you the membership of missions. You say the membership, how do you get that? Look down in verse 19, watch this. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What do we do when we get somebody saved? We baptize them, right? right? And we still use that scripture in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, right? right. My cousin got saved and uh, he, he was going to get baptized at our home church and he calls me up one day. We were, I was just a kid and he was a little older than me. He said, Ricky, I, I've got a question for you. It was really bothering him. I said, what is it, Mike? And he said, well, I know I'm getting ready to be baptized, but he said, do they duck you three times, one for the Father and one for the Son? <laughs> And I would have told him, yeah, but I didn't. I said, no, brother, they don't do that. And, uh, but we baptize. In, in, the, in other words, what I'm trying to say is this. When we send people to preach the gospel, the ultimate goal is to establish a fundamental Bible-preaching, independent Baptist church. 
Amen? I'm going to run that by you again. A fundamental Bible preaching independent Baptist church. That's what we, what we want every church to be self-governing and, uh, and, and self-supporting someday. Amen? Right. Now, I, I've seen men on the mission field and they said, well, people out here, they just, they're different. No, you need to go to the mission field and, tra- and baptize them. Now, you know, radio, I'm a help. I'm a mission's help. But my job is to help the local church. And there's nothing wrong with missions that help the local church. By the way, there's nothing wrong with sending food and clothes to the mission field. But let me, let me explain something to you. That cannot be our main goal. Our main goal must be to establish fundamental Bible preaching churches. Now I'm going to tell you something that uh, Dr. David Gibbs said the other day, and it, it blowed my mind. I, I just, I just can't, cannot get this in my mind that this is happening. But he said right here in America right now that the country of Australia is sending missionaries over here to start churches in our country. And that just grabbed me. That just grabbed me. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'll tell you this. I'll tell you what the late Dr. Bobby Robertson said just a few little while before he died. He said if something don't change, he said in 20 years from now, they'll be sending people to start churches in Walkertown, North Carolina. And right here's what he was saying by that. Ladies and gentlemen, the churches, the old time churches like yours and like mine, they're few and far between in this day and time. And, and I'm going to just say this, you know, the contemporary church is, is, is not given the right message, so we've got to give the right message. We have to get them converted and then baptized into the membership of the local church, you understand. And that's missions. We have to do that. Now, now conversion comes first. You can't baptize somebody into salvation. And I'm afraid that's what a lot of these contemporary churches are doing. I, I met uh, I, I, a little, uh, well, I'm not going to say how it's connected to me, but there's a little kid connected to me, and he got to talking to me, and he, his, his family's in one of these contemporary movements, and he was telling me, he said, oh, I've been baptized. And I told my wife, I said, I sure hope that's not what they're teaching. I know they're teaching some things that ain't right, but I, listen, I want to tell you, I got saved, and then I got baptized. Right. And I want to say this, if baptism will save a man, then the thief on the cross is lost, and Jesus died in vain. And I say this to you, I got saved and then got baptized a year later, amen? But God is in organized... Now, if you do other things and you support other ministries, like I said, our ministry is radio work. It's to help the local pastor. I work with the local pastor. Matter of fact, we're we're working with some local pastors right now in radio broadcasting. Uh, We've kind of launched out a new ministry by accident. I had to, well, not accident, but providence. I've had two pastors call me in the same day. We're helping a man in Tennessee, and we're helping a man in Texas with some radio broadcasting. And I want to be able to help people across this country. But our main goal is to get Bible-preaching churches started. I went just a few miles from here. A few years ago, I started the Mountaintop Baptist Church in Sparta, North Carolina. And my friends, when I started that church in the, in the, the, out of the WCOK radio building, that church came out of that building. Now, the church was separate from gospel broadcasting. We kept that separate because a local church is not a 501c3 organization. A local church is the organism, the living organism of God. You understand? And we started that church, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we never had 500 people. But let me tell you what we did have. We had some people back up in those mountains that were in deep religion, and glory to God, Brother Crotts, they got saved by the grace of God. I led my first man to the Lord. He got saved. It wasn't very long after that, his mother. And boy, she was in deep religion. And there's one thing the mountains have, and I, I love our mountains, and we're in the mountains here, but there's one thing our mountains are full of, and that's religion. Right. But you know, I know something. This lady came to me, and she said, Preacher, I need a sign whether I'm saved. I said, no, ma'am, you don't need a sign. I said, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to commit everything to Him. And, and I prayed with Have you ever, you, you preacher men, have you ever prayed with somebody and you just kind of knew they didn't get it? I mean, you prayed and it just didn't just, just connect right, you know? And, and I still believe in Holy Ghost, the convicting of the Holy Ghost of God. I believe in that, amen? So I go home and about 4.30 that evening, I was over there and I got a call. It was that lady. She said, Preacher, she saw her son go in my office and get saved about six months before that. And she called me on the phone. She said, Preacher, I figured out what I need to do this afternoon. I said, what do you need to do? She said, I need to go into that room. And I said, well, come on over here. Glory to God, you can come in that room. Amen. And me and my wife was in there. We took her in the same office right there by the same desk where her son got saved. And we led that woman to Jesus Christ. She was one of the best women in the church. Man, we had a Christmas meal. She cooked a whole meal for the entire church. Didn't tell her she was going to do that. She just brought the whole thing. Everybody else brought stuff, but that one woman brought enough stuff to feed everybody. The other day, she passed away. 
And I was sick. I didn't get to go preach her funeral. But I'll tell you one thing. You know what she told me when I left the mountains? She came to see me. And she started crying. And she said, Preacher, if you hadn't came here, I'd have died and went to hell without God. Said, I want to thank you for coming. And we got to baptize her into the local church. I'm telling you, it still works in 2020. The membership. And then I think another thing. You know, you'll establish churches and what do they do? They turn around and then they take on missions. And they send people out. Amen? I mean, you know, you know, you know I was amazed the other day that uh, Brother Rose was giving a history of his dad's work in Brazil. And he's talking about those churches down there, how that, uh, you know, it established. And now they're sending people out. And they're starting churches all across the country. And by the way, that's what ought to happen here in America. Somebody said, well, preacher, I don't believe in starting churches. He said, we got enough churches. We need to fill up the ones we got. Now, I'm going to say this. I disagree with that statement. I'm going to tell you why. I think everybody ought to be a member of a Bible preaching, King James Bible preaching church. I don't think folk ought to be a member of a church that won't preach the gospel. I don't think folk ought to be a member of a church that don't know Bible truths and Bible doctrines. I think you ought to be somewhere where they're giving you something from the Word of God and you're growing and you're learning about God. And so if that means starting new churches, I'm for it, amen. I'm not being ugly about that. I'm just saying, you know, America, it, it won't, believe me, it won't hurt America. Now, I'm not talking about starting out of splits and splinters. That's hogwash. But I, I'll tell you this tonight. Amen. When you start right, and, and, and you see it, and by the way, a young man going to Nebraska, and I'm so impressed with him. I, I, I've been recommending him to everybody. And I thank God he's going out there to start churches in the state of Nebraska. If I was a young man, I'd be going somewhere out there, South Dakota, Nebraska, some. I wouldn't go to Wyoming, Minnesota. What a dumb place to live. But uh, I'd go... I'd go don't tell Brother Higgins that, amen. He's going to be testifying on the share Y'all didn't hear me say that, amen. But it, I'll tell you, man, it's a dumb place to live, amen. Wyoming, he's mixed up. But uh, anyway, here's the thing. The gospel, the let, me, let me hurry along. I've got, I got two or three more here. Let me, let me give you another one here. I, I want to show you something from this scripture. I, I want to show you, I want to show you the manuscript of missions. I'm talking about the Bible. Well, look at verse 20. This is a different word, teaching, here. This word means to develop their growth. It means this, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You know what the missionary's job is after he wins them to God? Teach them the Bible. This line upon line, precept upon precept, not his convictions and thoughts, but teach them the King James Bible. Amen. I'll say this tonight. I know, I know Brother Hillman is here under Brother Crotz, but Brother Hillman's pastor, Brother Knox, is one of the best Bible preachers that I've ever heard in my life. I never hear that man preach that what I don't get something that sticks with me forever. And I mean that. And I mean, he's one of the best preachers I've ever heard in my life. And I like men that can take the Bible. And I'm not good at it. I've been doing it 36 years. I'm still not good at it. But I want to tell you this. This Bible will talk to you. And it will help you. You say, how do you grow your church? Preach the Bible to them Amen. in love. Amen. And give them time to grow. Amen. Some preachers, they just, they just try to rush. Why? Well, you know what? I, I, I'd have been kind of stupid planting those watermelons. I planted them on the sixth day of June. I remember, boy, I was grumbling. I said, man, I'm getting my garden out late. I'd been sick and it rained and all the water comes down to the bottom of my garden and I couldn't get in there to plant it. But you know what? On the, about the eighth day of June on Monday, I'd have been kind of stupid. I went out there and walked around and pointing my finger at those watermelons and shouting at them and kicking dirt and saying, grow, you sorry watermelons. Grow, you bunch of heathens. Now, that ain't going to help them. But you know what I did? I watered them. I miracle growed them. I mean, I carried water in the hot sun. I almost died for those watermelons. <laughs> and they were Baptist watermelons. You say, how you know? I only got about two or three good ones and the rest of them rotted. I didn't get them all converted. Amen. <laughs> But uh, let me tell you something. That's what a preacher ought to do is give it. And I wish I'd have seen that when I was pastoring churches. Good night. I didn't know how to pastor. I thought the meaner you preached and the tougher you was. By the way, by the way, I believe in the Bible. I believe in standards. But you've got to let people grow. You've got to help them. Brother, you've got to. The manuscript for missions is the Bible. And I don't like to hear any missionary say, well, that Bible preaching won't work anymore. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't go to the mission field. Now, I realize if you go to South America and you go to Brazil, you're not going to have the King James Bible there. You're going to have a Brazilian Bible, which is the equivalent of the King James. I realize if you go to Mexico, you're not going to have the King. One fellow asked a missionary who came to his church. He was a Spanish missionary. He said, now, do you have the King James Bible down in Mexico? Uh, no, they never had King James in Mexico either, amen? 
They don't know anything about the King James Bible. You've got to use a little diligence. You know what I mean? But here's what I'm saying to you. The Word of God, and, and God called it Scripture from the book of Isaiah in Jesus' day was 700 years after Isaiah, and He called it Scripture. I'm glad our Word of God is still inspired and it's still preserved for this day, and even in other languages. And glory to God, this Bible will work in Africa, and it'll work in Alabama. Amen. This Bible, ladies and gentlemen, will work in South America and South Dakota. I mean, this Bible will work, amen, if you preach the Word of God, uh, wherever you go and you preach the Word of God to them, it'll work right there. And you'll grow some churches. Now, it may take a while. And by the way, some places, some missionaries go. Uh, I heard a story several years ago about a missionary. He went to the mission field somewhere, uh, maybe, I don't remember, maybe it was India or somewhere, and he had thousands of people saved. And God led him out of there. And boy, he saw a lot of results. And he went out to some of our... Matter of fact, he went to Wyoming. Not Wyoming, Minnesota, but he went to Wyoming, the state of Wyoming. And uh, he's been there eight years and seen about eight people saved. And he said, that's been hard. But let me say this to you, friend. You never know the seed you're sowing. Amen? I mean, listen. Now, let, me, let, me, let me give it to you like this. They, they say this is a true story. A man was in one of the South American countries one day. He went down there and stayed for eight years. Every day the man would go to the train station and hand tracks out. That's what he did. He never could get a church started. Nothing would ever open up for him. But for eight solid years, from sun up to sundown, eight hours a day, he'd hand tracks out right there at the train station. One day he got down, Brother Crotts, to his last box of tracks. He told his wife, he said, well, we've done no good here. For eight years, he said, I've stood on the same street corner. I've handed tracts out. He said, nobody has got saved. Not one convert. No church has been started. We have wasted eight years. He said, I'm going to give this last box of tracts out, and I'm going home. He worked that day, gave those tracts out, got down to just the last handful of tracts. He was starting to pack up and go home. And a young man came to him and said, Sir, could I talk with you for a minute? He said, Sure. He said, Sir, you don't remember me. He said, but when you first came to our country, I was a young teenage boy. And I was riding one of those trains <clears throat> through this train station one day. And he said, you were handing out tracts. And he said, I got that tract. And he said, I read that tract and I got saved. <clears throat> and he said, I got with some other American missionaries. And he said, God called me to preach. And he said, I just want you to know I'm pastoring a little church over in the mountains now. And it's all because of you standing here handing these tracts out. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know who you're reaching. But your job is to sow. Amen. Amen. When I, God's taught me so much even in planting a garden. You know what my job is to sow? Amen. My job's not to make it grow. I can't do that. Brother, I don't have power to make it grow. But I'll tell you one thing. If I just keep doing what I know to do, something will grow. Amen. 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 I mean, I, I, planted, I planted turnip greens the other day. Brother Don Hudson over at Fall Creek Baptist Church in Jonesville, North Carolina, he's the expert on turnip greens. He says he likes turnip greens better than ice cream. I don't know if he does or not. I don't know how anybody likes turnip greens better than ice cream, but now it is pretty, they're pretty close. But uh, I planned them like he said. I went down there, everything else is dead, but my greens ain't dead. Praise God. Now, my job ain't to make them grow. My job is just to do what I know, and what I know is to preach the Word of God. Amen? Now, let me give you this. I want to show you two more things, and I'm done. I want to show you the magnitude of missions. Look in verse number 20. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Here's the magnitude of missions. God said, I'm going to start right here uh, with you apostles, and all the way through the church age, we're going to have missions. And I'm going to go with you. In other words, if you go to South America, I'm going with you. If you go to China, I'm going with you. By the way, you won't do anything without His presence. Amen? The magnitude of missions is all down through time, God's been going with us. Amen? The magnitude of missions is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he said, and lo, I am with thee all the way even unto the end of the world. That's, that word literally means age. Unto the end of this church age, we're going to have missions. And God said, I'm with you. And the magnitude of that is that you just don't know how much fruit. Somebody said, I'd sure like to have been D.L. Moody. I wouldn't have. I'd like to have been the man that won him to the Lord. Amen. Did you know, my friend, you think about Oliver B. Green. Wouldn't you like to have been the man that won him to the Lord? Amen. I mean, we don't never know what people are going... These young kids. I, when I was a little boy, and I wasn't even saved, we had a lot of missionaries come through our home church at Rhonda Baptist Tabernacle in Rhonda, North Carolina. And there was a Mexican missionary that came through there. Now, he was a, of Mexican descent. He worked with the Spanish people. He scared me to death. I'm about nine years old one night, and I go by to shake his hand. He lays his hand on me and said, Son, I'm praying the Lord will call you to preach. Call me to preach, huh? Do what? What? Huh? I wasn't even saved. But you know what? I got saved, and then I got called to preach. 
And I was able to tell that man's son about that one day. Let me tell you something, brother. You don't know who you're going to reach. You don't know how. The, I mean, we, we were so poor. And I ought not tell you this, but I'll tell you this. I, my wife says I tell too much funny stuff. But, but I grew up poor. Did you, anybody in here grow up poor? Son, we're so poor on Sundays, we went to Kentucky Fried Chicken and licked other people's fingers. We didn't have no money. <laughs> Amen. We wasn't really that poor, but... I told that story one day. My mama's alive. She said, boy, I'll have you know this. We weren't ever that poor, but we were poor. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I'm honest. If you'd ever said any, anything we'd ever done out of them Catherines over there, they'd have said, oh... You mean that fella's a drunk over there and them two boys that's mean as a devil? I mean, we, we had a mama work with some lady and, and she brought her little boy over at the house one day and me and Doug, we proceeded to fill his head full of sand. I mean, we just put sand all in his hair and all that kind. I mean, we as mean as a devil. I mean, but you know what God did? He got us in church and saved that whole crowd of Catherines and called us to preach. And I've been doing this 36 years. You don't know what God's going to do with anybody. Now, somebody's asked me a while ago about my eyesight. Well, I fall up things, down things, up steps, down steps. I have never fell from grace, but I sure did fall. And I love Dr. Sattler, but there is one thing he did that I want to talk to him about when he gets to heaven. When I get to heaven, he's already there. I want to talk to him about that platform at Tabernacle because that is the dumbest platform that I have ever been on in my life. And I fell off that thing the other night and landed into the piano and about broke my neck. Amen? And... Uh, <laughs> I was preaching and I got Barry's brother Logan to give the invitation. I went out and fell right off the platform, embarrassed me. And those people are supposed to have their heads bowed, but they're watching me, you know. And, uh, but, but what I'm saying is this. You, you can't let any kind of disability bother you from preaching the Word of God. Well, I prayed when I wasn't been called on. I guess I preached a time or two when I wasn't supposed to. Amen? I mean, I don't know. And I used to hate it. You'd go to revival meetings. We'll have all the preachers stand up. Man, I didn't know when they got to me. I didn't know, you know. And one night he started to front the church. I was in the back and told where I was from. They made me do it all over again. Everybody laughing, you know. And uh, I mean, but I just, I just decided that years ago that that ain't going to bother me. You know why? Because the magnitude of missions is God will go with you. Whatever you got wrong with you, you say, I can't talk plain. God will fix that problem. He did for Moses. You say, when I've got a disability, God will help you. The magnitude of missions is God can take something little and make something big out of it. Amen. Amen. Not going to worry about that. I, I, I came off a platform here a few years ago. Every time me and Brother Joe Arthur's in a meeting together, <clears throat> nothing good ever comes out of that. Um, I was watching Joe. He hollered at me for something, got my attention. I went back and sat down. I'm sitting there on the pew, and, and so it came time to take an offering. I believe in being generous, but I don't believe in being over generous, unless the Holy Ghost tells you to. And this new money, I can't tell a hundred from a twenty unless I look at it real close. And I pulled it out of my billfold. I said, this is a 20. And she said, yes, it is, sir, but I'm not your wife. She's sitting four rows back. <laughs> yeah. See, the difference between my stories and other preachers, mine are true. I, 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 humbling experience. I almost left the church over that. I told my wife, I said, you ever get near it, I'll kill you. And so help me, I went to preach in that lady's husband's church and my wife and her had the same color clothes on it. And I said, good night. <laughs> but uh, that's all right. You say, what did you do in that embarrassing situation? I lied. <laughs> I made it like my cell phone ringing. I got up and left. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, here's enough of that. But here's the deal. The, the magnitude of mission is God to go with you. I mean, you know, I heard a story about a man went to the mission field and, uh, you know, he's in this hut one night and all these natives surrounded this hut, Brother Crotts, with swords and they're going to kill him. And all of a sudden, they just, like that, they just left. They had their little machetes, I guess it was. And they left. And a few weeks later, that man was able to win some of the people in that tribe to the Lord and finally he won the chief to the Lord. And the chief told him one day, he said, you know, six months ago, we surrounded your hut to kill you, right? He said, yes, I knew you came, but I knew you left all of a sudden. He said, why did you leave? He said, didn't you see those men out on your grass in front of your hut with flaming swords? God sent a band of angels down there, brother, and run that crowd off. You say, I don't believe that. I do. God said the angel Lord to come around about them that fear Him. Amen. I'm telling you the magnitude of missions is God will go with you. And the magnitude of missions is God just keeps, uh, as you go, God just keeps multiplying your rewards. Can I give you this? I don't hold you long, but I'm trying to give you what the Lord wants me to so I can help you. I want to give you this. Uh, we came, we were born, as I said, we were born poor, and man, we were heading on the wrong side of the tracks. 
I won't say what I was doing, but at eight years old, man, I was betting on car racing and all kinds of stuff. I mean, my daddy, I was just following his footsteps, Brother Cox. I didn't know. I mean, we're on the wrong... And you know what? One night in 1975, three men won my mama to the Lord. And brother, when she got saved, I'm telling you, things changed in that house. There was such a holy presence over that house that night. About two years later, glory to God, I got saved. Now, I'm nothing, okay? I'm way down here. I want you to understand that. But God has used me over 36 years, and I don't know how many states I've preached in. I don't know how, where I've went on radio. I've been all over this country on radio. And you know, I've reached more people than my mama will ever reach. But in heaven, to her account, I really believe this. Every time I reach somebody, I win them to the Lord, I believe she gets a part of that. Brother, she helped me. If she hadn't took me to church, I'd still be lost. But thank God, missions, the magnitude of missions. And I'm closing with this one. I use a big word. I'd look this word up and see what it meant. Amen. But, but I want to give you this. At least I'm honest. Amen. I want to give you this because I, because I put this together myself. I didn't get this outline out of some book. I just, I just, I just want to give you this. Amen. I want you to notice the maximum of missions. You know that word maximum means a small truth. Look at that last word in verse number 20. Amen. You thought I was going to leave that out, didn't you? That word amen. You know what God did? He said, go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to deserve all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know what he did? He stuck an amen on there. He stuck a let it be so on there. He stuck a that is truth on there. And what I'm trying to say to you, until the day of the rapture, missions will still be working. You say what you will. You say, preacher, we're living in a modern day and all the contemporary churches are going to take over. Oh, no, they're not. I'm glad we can still be Philadelphian churches in a Laodicean church age. Amen. I know that we're increased with goods and rich and all that. And you can look at it that way. But but I'll look at it another way. If Enoch, and I believe he was, if Enoch was a type of the rapture, and I believe he was, he never saw death. You know how Enoch went out of here? The Bible said he had this testimony that he pleased God. said he walked with God. Now, brother, there may not be many of us, but when the rapture comes, I want to be walking with God. And I still want to be supporting missions, don't you? When I give my missions money to Tabernacle Baptist Church and I trust them, they'll do what's right. But brother, they can support missions or buy bubble gum. That is their business, not mine. Amen. But I do what is right. And God will bless me and bless them. And God is still blessing missions all these years. God's blessing missions. By the way, did you know that you tonight are a result of a missionary? I'm closing with this. Did you know that the Apostle Paul tried to go into Asia, and God wouldn't let him. And then he went into Macedonia, and that's how Europe got the gospel. And then Europe got the gospel, and then there were some people that left England, and they went to Holland because they were persecuted, and they boarded a ship called the Mayflower, and in 1620 they landed here, and all down through these years the gospel has been given. Ladies and gentlemen, why? Because of the apostles. How would you like to get his rewards? The apostle Paul. You know what the apostles were? They were the first missionaries. That's what they were. Now tonight, I don't know how, what your pastor's doing. I don't know what your conference will be all about. I don't know how you'll do it, but I, I, he'll probably, if he does like a lot of other preachers, at the end of the week, he's going to say to you, has the Lord laid on your heart what you're going to give this year? Are you going to do anything different than you did last year? Listen, you be led of the Lord. But I'll promise you this. You do what God tells you to do, and everything will be all right. Amen. I'm going to close my part of this service. I appreciate it, Brother Carl. I'm so honored to be here. I have no idea. I have quit looking at my watch when I preach. Because I was here in revival here several years ago, and there was a fellow. He still may be here. I don't know. But he took my watch away from me one night. He said, you ain't looking at it tonight. And he made me give it to him before I preached. I'll never forget that. Amen. So I don't look at it anymore. So it don't matter to me. I did, I'm come to help you, folk. I come to help you. And here's the thing. Missions. You may say, oh, that's something you and Brother Crotts and Brother Knox and Pastor Logan made it. Oh, no, no, no. We didn't make that up. You see, mission missions were long before we were ever born, friend. And glory to God, missions, again, every creature needs a preacher. Heavenly Father, I'm glad for the Barrow Trail Baptist Church. And Lord, I can tell that this church is doing something. And that's evident, Lord, by this building and by the way the services are conducted. And Lord, the good things that I'm hearing here. And I pray for Brother Crotz and his wife and family as they continue to labor here. I, Lord, I, you know I pray for them. And Lord, I pray for this church. I pray for Brother Hillman, Lord, and use him here also. And Lord, I pray, God, for uh, this church that it be a light right here in these mountains. And Lord, I'm honored, God, that you would do a great work right here in these mountains of Virginia. And Lord God, I pray you'll just help them.